Hey everybody, happy Labor Day. This is a big deal this day. Too often we have these holidays and we don't think deeply about what they mean. And uh, Labor Day is a big deal. Uh, when I was a little girl, my father used to tell us the story about how when he was a toddler, his father would take him on his shoulders and that uh, his father took him to a rally where they were listening to Eugene V. Debs. And Eugene V. Debs founded the original railway union. Uh, my grandfather was a worker on the, on the Rock Island Railroad. Then later, my father uh, was a worker for the CIO. He was a labor organizer there in Detroit. My, fa my brother worked for Cesar Chavez between 1968 and 1971. So when I was growing up, uh, support for labor, excitement about labor, belief in labor was very, very strong. Uh, my father and my parents, both my parents used to say, if you ever cross a picket line, don't bother to come home. So it was, um, something I bore witness to how America began to change, particularly in the 1980s, with this uh, definitely uh, a weakening of labor due to the demonization of labor by the forces of trickle-down economics, Reaganomics, etc. Once you started saying, oh no, the money should go into the hands of the stockholders as opposed to the other stakeholders, such as workers, uh, with the canard that this was gonna be good because then all those people who made all that money would, you know, would create jobs, and then that would lift all boats, but their business model was not job creation. Their business model was job elimination and exploitation of workers. So all that this led to was a $50 trillion transfer of wealth and power out of the hands of 90% of the people. Between 1880 and 1900, there was this extraordinary explosion of unfettered um, power of capital that really suppressed the working people of the United States. In response to that, there was the establishment of organized labor. Now, what we're experiencing now is the second Gilded Age, and what you have in response to that is new labor. And this is an extremely important part of the course correction uh, going on in the United States today. We, we can't have a serious fundamental course correction without it. That's why in my own uh, platform, you can go to Marianne 2024, read more about this. I have an economic bill of rights, support for sectorial bargaining, support for the PRO Act, support for bolstering the NL NLRB, et cetera. And uh, been doing a lot with my podcasts and so forth. Christian Smalls, the, the University of Michigan grad students who did get their contract, uh, congratulations on that. The baristas at Starbucks, uh, the SAG after a strike, the writer's strike, and this week I'll be in Las Vegas and I will be on the picket line with the culinary workers. But it's bigger than any one particular uh, strike. It, it's bigger than any one particular union effort. It has to do with an entire effort in our country to recognize that the working people of the United States are the majority of the people of the United States. And if a government is to be of the people, by the people, and for the people, it should be of the workers, by the workers, and for the workers in such large part, which was a traditional value of the Democratic Party. Roosevelt and so forth. Now, what's happened now is that the Democratic Party elites, corporatist elites, uh, try to have it both ways. Uh, so there's a lot of performative, yeah, we're with you, uh, but not with you so much, for instance, as with President Biden, uh, giving subsidies, uh, but not demanding uh, higher wages and benefits and uh, 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 the, the, the everything that the workers need in order for it to be fair. You see what's going on with the UAW right now, um, and it's really exciting to see the kind of heft uh, that is being displayed by new labor. It's really important to see the young activists. You know, we have a higher percentage of Americans supporting labor now than we've had since the 1960s, and young people support labor now uh, to the tune of 88% of them. On the other hand, it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens because if if labor uh, leadership continues to just this sort of codependent relationship with the Democratic Party, um, young people I don't think are gonna buy that because we're all ready to move on now. We're all ready to break the chain, break the cord that ties us to the corporatist paradigm and mentality by which corporations and corporate power is always final, in the final analysis, given precedence over the safety, health, and well-being of the American people. In my running for president, 
uh, I see a, a, a partnership such as existed with Roosevelt and others, where the power and the heft of labor and the power and the heft of the U.S. president and the U.S. government is what should be, uh, is uh, in service uh, to one another, uh, where appropriate, uh, mutual, uh, mutual progress for the sake of the people of the United States. So I look forward to ways that my campaign can continue to amplify uh, the voices of labor. And uh, I'm, I'm working with everyone that uh, uh, I know within those spaces to bring forth a new day in labor in order to help bring forth a new day in the United States of America. So happy Labor Day. And um, don't let it be a mindless holiday now. Make it mindful, read up, think about it, reflect. We have so much to do. God bless you, everybody. Have a beautiful day.